Thanks, Eva Gomez, for our dancing countdown this week. This week, this week we'll be covering block scheduling, the super extravagant Mr. Wilson contest, sports, our school cell phone policy, and senior projects. The Red Cross Blood Drive is scheduled for March 29th. We'll start recruiting on March 1st, so don't forget to sign up. And this is the eighth year that the Homeless Shelter 26 St. John Vianney Winter Shelter has been sponsored by the Red Cross and NHS clubs. Wilson students raise the money for the lunches and dinners that they send home with the clients of the shelter. They also deliver the prayer, serve the food, and clean up. Wow, that's amazing. Humanitarian work. That's what I'm all about. Save the puppies. Okay, let's take a look at possible block scheduling next year. Okay, so what do you think of block schedule? I'm against it. I'm against it too. Okay. I like it because it's like less classes and more of the class each day. Well, I think it's a good idea because like that we could have more more time in our class and study even more and get the, and get the lessons even better. Um, I think it might benefit us, but then like like a lot of students don't like it because it's going to change a lot of our schedules, but then I don't know. If we try it, I guess. I don't know. What's the block schedule? I'm here with Mr. Webster, and we're going to find out some things about block scheduling. So, Mr. Webster, what is block scheduling? Well, first of all, we would just want to say that as we consider this plan, uh, it's all done to help the students and uh, make school a better place for them, a better learning environment. Mm -hmm. This is unlike a normal type of block scheduling that most of you guys would be familiar with where usually when people think of block scheduling they're thinking two hours um, at a time every other day and that's not what we're talking about. What we're looking at is what is called a four by four block schedule mm -hmm. and this is where you have 90 minutes a day every single day and you take a class generally for just one semester and so after a first semester you switch over and you take two or three or four new classes the next time. It's very similar to a college system mm -hmm. and uh, students as uh, freshmen, freshmen and sophomore would usually be asked to take four classes a day, four classes a semester and juniors and seniors would have the option of taking just three if they'd want. And that would include your electives, uh, it would include any math or English or science or anything else like that. So that's kind of what we're looking at in a nutshell. It's much more complicated than that. Um, there's a lot of other things we got to do with it to make it work for us. Um, but it's really done so that as a student, you only have maybe two or three classes of homework that you have to worry about, or two or three tests, or two or three finals, um, or two or three books that you can forget at home and not bring with you to class. That's neat. <laughs> yes, any other questions? Um, when will it be implemented? Um, if we, if the staff decides, and again, we're just in the we're just in the process of discussing it, and it's not a for sure thing, uh, but if the staff decides that this is an area that we want to go into, um, it very well could be implemented as soon as next fall. So uh, it will obviously have no effect on this year's seniors, but it could have an immediate effect on next year's seniors. That's me. <laughs> Okay, and how will it be decided if we have it or not? Usually by contract, if you're going to change any type of scheduling, um, what it would mean is, is that the staff, upon uh, discussing it and looking at the merits and the drawbacks, concerns, everything else, um, then the staff would take a vote on it. And based upon what the staff decides to do, uh, then we move forward. Hi, I'd like to have a... Uh, uh, You can always order Wilson's chocolate chip cookies for only two for a dollar. How many should I get? Thirty. That's what I was thinking. Did you know that the Mr. Wilson contest was on March 2nd? Are you kidding me? Already? No, it is. Who will be the top male walkout with the most testosterone this year? Let's take a look at an interview about this prestigious title and then sports with Coach Merrill. the organizer and director of Mr. Wilson. Doris, can you tell us a little bit about Mr. Wilson? Um, well, Mr. Wilson is something that we started four years ago. Um, it's a mock male beauty pageant, and basically we um, get 12 contestants, but this year's there's um, 11 instead. But we get contestants, and they compete against each other to win um, a prize. 
Um, the prize is going to be money. Um, it's a cash prize of how many tickets we sell. So for every ticket we sell, $1 goes toward um, the club that sells the ticket. Um, $1 goes toward the prize money and $2 goes towards drama to fund the show. And um, the theme this year is 007. We have a James Bond theme. Um, the decorations and some of the music is all themed together. So, yeah. And what are the requirements to be in Mr. Wilson? Um, we basically just um, we did a little talent scout and just wanted to see who wanted to do it. Um, anyone who's in a club who's um, active in a club or a sport on campus is eligible to do it. Okay. And who judges this um, competition? Um, the judges come from just people around the community that have either judged in the past or um, alumni um, and such. And when is this all this take when is all this taking place? Um, all this takes place on March 2nd. Um, it's going to be this Thursday at 7 o'clock in the gym. Tickets um, will be sold in the amphitheater or from any contestant. Um, doors will open at 6.30 and just come out and support all the clubs. Um, it's a great way to boost school spirit. So, yeah. Thank you. I'm Jazzy here with our athletic director, Mr. Merrill, about the winter sports wrap up. Okay, this winter, we had a very successful winter program. Our boys' soccer team in, came in third in league and qualified for CIF. Our girls' soccer team was very competitive, uh, but we had some sad news. Our coaches, uh, Jennifer Soderstrom and Drew Soderstrom, have decided not to coach next year, so we will have a new girls' soccer coach for next year. Uh, girls' basketball qualified for uh, CIF, came in third beat uh, Burroughs of Ridgecrest in the first round of the CIF before we lost to that school that our principal came from uh, a few years ago called Monrovia, but we'll forgive them for that. Our boys basketball team was very competitive and we're looking for better things next year from them. Our wrestling team had a, a, a fantastic year. Eric Alaris uh, was sixth in the state, was second in the regionals. Congratulations, Erica. Fantastic job. Our boys, we had uh, two league champions, uh, Stephen Alizaris and Chris Silva. Congratulations to those guys for winning league and qualifying for CIF. Also in wrestling that qualified for CIF was Nathan Caldera and Frank Ayala. You guys did a fantastic job, and congratulations to all the athletes and their coaches. And we've just started winter, uh, excuse me, spring sports. So all you people come out and watch the spring sports program, especially our track team, who we're going to be league champs this year. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Just 12 more years. Next, we'll talk with Mr. Sweet about our school's cell phone policy. And then you'll see a cell phone ad and why you have to be careful where you leave your cell phone. All right, Mr. Sweet, what is the cell phone policy? Uh, cell phone policy basically is what's allowed by our uh, state policy, which allows students to, to bring cell phones to campus for emergency use, and they may have them with them. Uh, but we ask that they are not turned on and not used during school hours, which is the hours between 8 or 7.55 and 3 o'clock. Okay, why do we have the cell phone policy? Uh, the policy, like I said, it's basically a state policy which allows students to have them for emergency purposes. Uh, and as far as not having them on campus, used on campus, it's more of a distraction and causes uh, more issues of you know, cell phones going off in class, cell phones... Uh, going off, uh, you know, causing a distraction, whether it be at lunch or before, sometimes before school, but most of the time uh, in class and, and passing periods. That's why we really don't want to have the cell phones turned on and, and being used. Is it a problem here at Wilson? Uh, it is a problem. Uh, at times, it is a problem. Other times, you know, it comes and goes. Sometimes it's a bigger issue than others. Uh, again, if we can get them where they're not ringing and not being used during class time and school hours, it, it wouldn't be a problem at all. What's the consequences for having cell phone in school? Uh, consequences, first one, 
Uh, cell phone is taken away by the teacher uh, if it's done in the classroom uh, or out at lunch. Uh, we'll take the cell phone away. They can pick it up first offense. Students can pick it up after school uh, from the uh, discipline office. They can pick it up up here uh, as soon as the, the school day is over. <laughs> Finally, we'll wrap up our video bulletin with a look at senior projects. Projects by seniors. Seniors doing projects. Drama. Impressive. Hi, I'm Crystal. And I'm Chris. We're rich, beautiful, ice out, and, and finally 16! <laughs> this is gonna be the awesomest party ever! Hi, I'm Melissa Larson. I'm here with Jessica Jenkins, and I'm going to interview her about senior projects. So, what are senior projects? Senior projects are basically seniors get to direct any type of scene they want, and yeah. And who can audition for the senior projects? They're open to anyone in the school, and also you can get alumni if you wanted to from the drama department. So, who are some of the seniors that directed the scenes, and what did they direct? Talia Jarjor directed Twilight of the Gold. Benjamin Benet directed Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind. Eastwood did Mean Girls, Doris Lee did My Super Sweet 16, and Danny Bustamante did My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Okay, thank you. And did you go to the senior projects? Yes, yes I did. And which one was your favorite? My Big Fat Greek Wedding. That one was hilarious. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm here with Adrian. Did you go to the senior projects? Yes, I did. And which one was your favorite? Uh, my Sweet 16 one. That was freaking hilarious. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm here with Ola. Did you go to the senior projects? I did. I went with my English class. Okay, and which one was your favorite? They were all pretty good, but uh, I must say I was most enthralled by the Mean Girls. They, that, that had to be my favorite one. <laughs> and that wraps up your video bulletin for this week. Until next time, Wilson. I know that everybody's saying what a great man Henry is. I think that's well known. But what a lot of students don't know on campus and some teachers is that he cut a lot of kids' breaks, talked to other teachers about cutting breaks for kids, um, going in and, and talking to me about a student that he knew, uh, you know, I, I might have had a problem with, and talking me into, uh, you know, giving him a second chance. That was Henry. All the kids on campus knew that, and uh, he's going to be well missed. We in security are going to sadly miss Henry Corral. He was a good partner and a good friend. He helped out a lot of the students, and he always was there for us when we needed him. To his family, we're going to help support. We uh, are really saddened at the loss of a good friend. And like everyone else at Wilson, we're going to miss him. Big time. Big time. <clears throat> Wanted to say a few words about um, Henry. Um, he was a real kind man. Uh, I know he had the, the best interests of the kids at heart all the time. He could be really tough on them, but uh, uh, deep down he, was, he had a very fatherly way about him, and the kids really responded to him. Uh, he's really going to be missed here on campus. 
I just wanted to say that、um, Henry was a great colleague to me. He was also a great friend. He was real good with the students and with the staff. And we're gonna miss him very, very much. It's it's a great loss, and I'm very, very saddened that he's that he's gone. What I'm gonna miss most about Henry is that.、Um, He's probably one of the greatest men I've ever met、uh, on this campus. I remember on the first day I was here, he welcomed me with open arms, gave me a lot of advice about life.、Um, I look forward to seeing him every day. And now that he's not here, his presence will be sorely missed by me, by everyone else on this campus.、Uh, best wishes go to his family. We miss you. Um, Henry was a good friend. He was a very, very strong supporter of our volleyball program. He actually、um, traveled with us when we went up to Rim of the World for our second round, and、um, really took care of the girls and supported them and watched them, and、um, just was a big rooter.、Uh, we got to know each other pretty well, especially since his daughter、um, was on our volleyball team. And he's、um, going to be truly missed. He was a great father, a great colleague, a great security officer who really knew how to get to、um, our students and really helped them out. And was just a great fan of our Wilson family. And he's really going to be missed. And I liked the jokes he would play with other teachers. He'd do his little punk. And he'd、uh, try to get, you know, kids、um, scared, like they were going to get in trouble. And I'm really going to miss his smiling face and his hellos in the morning. And just, he was a great man, and he's truly going to be missed. And I'm glad to say it was a friend.、Uh, Henry will be sorely missed at the school.、Uh, it's not a time that you guys are able to have people like that around the school that just boost the morale of the whole school.、Um, something like this, this tragedy happens. Uh, it makes you really think about life and how precious it is.、Uh, he'll be sorely missed, and hopefully, everyone else will take advantage of this and、uh, pay attention to those around them and make sure that you tell everybody、uh, how much you care about them every day. So the smiles we left behind.